Okay, so here's the app in App Store on an iPhone, RX Cam View, and you need to install it. I deleted it off my phone so I could show you everything. This is the same app used for the 4K system and the 1080p system. So I open it. Would like to send you notifications. I'll allow because if you want alerts, that's how you get them. Uh, Allow and deny is the user agreement. You can read that if you want. And we'd like to use Bluetooth. I'm not sure why, but we'll turn it on. Like to access the camera. You have to let it access the camera to scan the codes. Find and connect the devices on your local network. Well, we'll see how that goes. Okay, and add device. I want to add an IP camera, an NVR or a DVR, and it's looking for the camera. So let's give it the camera. So we go into the menus. I've got to unlock it. That's kind of normal. Unlock. Hmm. Okay. So go to system information and there's your code and the camera's still trying oh, there it scanned it okay so what it tells me is it found the system it's looking for a password okay so this is what it shows me it says port and a little icon that tells me i should hit that and see what it says after the device is connected it may automatically switch to the correct port which is probably like nine thousand. 443, something like that. And I want to put in my password. Uh, and I make them easy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one through eight. And I'll save that. And it's given me some shortcuts. Uh, remove device, modify device, sticky, preview device, QR code of the device. And... Got, it's connected. Now I'm on Wi-Fi. So let's see what we got. So it's giving you some clues. So the next time you come in, menu, favorite group, remote playback, say OK. You have to select your device, N7708, which is the default device. And I can click on a camera. So if you hit that, it comes up and starts showing me the cameras. And there's the camera. I kind of like that. And I just hit the device to reload them. There's multiple ways to do things. Say I go into a camera, I double tap to get into that. I see it okay. If I want to go back, I can just hit the device again. It'll reload all the cameras. No huge problem with that. Now, I said I've got this on my local Wi-Fi. So now that I've obviously got it working, and you always want to get it working on your local Wi-Fi. This device, talking to that device, nothing in between but your ISP router. Uh, then we see it. I'll go in and turn off Wi-Fi. Oh, sorry guys, I did that with Wi-Fi off. And it worked. <clears throat> so it had to go through the cellular network. It had to go from my phone to the tower, from the tower to their office, from the office to my ISP router into this system. So, wow. So it says offline, but as soon as I hit that, it'll go back online. So I, I thought I normally kept my Wi-Fi on. My wife has borrowed my phone and she turns Wi-Fi off a lot. She plays some online game that she doesn't want it on her local Wi-Fi. Why? I don't know. I don't care. So there we go. I just hit that to reload it. I'm sure there's other things. You can hit that to get playback. It's telling you what you need to do. Frames by frame, slow, fast, play, pause, choose all. So I just want to see one. That's playing back from midnight last night. And I want to go faster. And you see it moving, but very slowly. So once I get it to this stage, I can just put my finger on the timeline and change it. 
So you can see the little arrow spin for a minute. Still playing, and I hit fast forward. You see the little time? How fast that's moving is how fast forward you have. But I can also do other things. So I can pick this. If I want to go back to four cameras, I can hit that. And I can turn the sound on and off then to let my phone itself control the level of sound. If I hit the little search, I can do all, normal, alarm, motion, IO record, intelligence, PIR detection. So do motion and you'll find where there's no, well, there was no motion in the night. No big surprise. So double tap and it goes back to all four. Uh, it just, today there was no motion. That does not surprise me a bit. So I just fast, I just drug it forward till 11 a.m. And you get this little annoying message. Uh, do you wish to join the user experience program? It will help improve products and services. No, don't care. So there you go, and you get up in here, uh, notifications, no alarm information. So I haven't set up any alarms, so I can't get notifications. So there's remote settings, click on the device. Almost anything I do from the main NVR, I can do from here. I emphasize almost. So I wanna look at the hard drive. It's full, remember? It's always going to be full. It records until it's full, and then once it's full, the first video it recorded will be the first one written over. So I call that a circular buffer. So it just keeps recording over and over again, but you never lose anything other than what's old and it's written over. So there it says overwrite. And I have set set to auto. So I did this, you watched me do every step. This is actually very easy. It doesn't cost anything to use this system, but for that remote function to work, it has to know where to go back to. So when I hit that, that's registered somewhere on the internet, and it goes there and says, oh, that guy's at this IP. So I think this is an amazing system. Of course, I think you guys know that by now. Maybe there's four cameras. I want four. So there we go, and I go into one, then I go sideways. Once I go sideways, it's supposed to go full resolution. Uh, the 1080p, I think, is a good system. The 4K, they really, anything that was wrong with the 1080p, they fixed with the 4K. I highly recommend that you do the setup of the app at home on your Wi-Fi. When I did it this time, you saw that the Wi-Fi was actually off. So it worked flawlessly the first time. Just And it's, you scan the code, and that's about it. So I'm liking this system. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.